Fifty years ago next Sunday, on June 21, 1963, 80 cardinals of the Catholic Church gathered in conclave in Rome to face the daunting task of choosing a successor to Pope St. John XXIII. After only two days of deliberations, the cardinals elected Giovanni Battista Montini, who would take the name of Pope Paul VI. The enormity of the task that lay in front of the newly elected Pope can hardly be overstated. As Pope Francis beatified Pope Paul VI last October 19, he officially recognized that had it not been for the prophetic vision and courage of Pope Paul VI, the world would never have known the Second Vatican Council, nor St. Pope John Paul the Great's call for a new evangelization of the Church. Many issues awaiting the new Pope demanded the Church's unqualified and immediate attention. At the center was the question of whether the Church would become a partner in the social, political, and anthropological struggles assailing modern man, or lapse back into a dogmatic winter, a doctrinal ghetto, deaf to the cries of the people, and ever more alienated from modern man's deepest aspirations. As Russian missiles made their way to Cuba and Cold War tensions threatened to burst into another global conflagration, the new pope followed man as the way for the church and pleaded with world leaders for peace as he said, nothing is lost with peace, everything can be lost with war. Meanwhile, even as the youth of the world were chanting, make love, not war, all you need is love. Values that had once given birth to a civilization based on the dignity and the sanctity of monogamic marriage were now questioned, sidelined, and at times completely replaced by the desire of unbridled emancipation. The church was listening to modern man who sought freedom not primarily to live, to love, and to serve, but freedom from governments, freedom from authority, familiar and ecclesial, freedom from God. The boat of Peter that Pope Paul VI had been entrusted to guide was in great turmoil at best, rudderless and sinking at worst. Still, the new Pope knew that as great a role as the Church was called to play in the world, still greater was the need for reform of the Church from within. At heart was the question of whether the church should remain locked within itself as an institution that imposes truth through dogma, or partner with humanity as mother and teacher, mater et magistra, in her task to be lumen gentium to all peoples. One issue would decidedly mark the pontificate of blessed Pope Paul VI and enable the world to share in his prophetic courage. In 1968, the Pope published Humana Vitae and effectively joined the mission of the Christian family to the renewal of the Church. While looking to the past and to the beginnings of the Church for guidance and inspiration, Blessed Pope Paul VI understood that he had to be, first and foremost, an obedient disciple of Christ if he was to be a faithful servant to the Church. We are here today, many years after the publication of Humana Vitae, because families have believed the message of Blessed Pope Paul VI, the Pope of the Docility of the Holy Spirit, and have opened themselves to love and to life, giving birth to children who otherwise would never have been born. They too are living witnesses that love does not exclude sacrifice, that there is joy in doing the will of God, and that thanks to the generosity of Christian families, humanity can hope yet again that God will not leave his church without priests as we contemplate the fields that are already white for the harvest. Without Christian families, there are no children, 
and without children, there are no priests. Blessed Pope Paul VI, thank you for your courage. Thank you for our lives. Pray for us.